Hello and welcome. Today we will discuss dynamic NAT for overlapping subnet. Essentially, we will be seeing how are we going to be using that dynamic NAT concept that you know from the beginner series. You saw this concept in lecture number seven, which is the last lecture of that series. You saw that how dynamic NAT can be used. And I told you in that lecture that I would actually show you how you could actually use this in a real life scenario because buying public pools and using them with dynamic net is just not scalable and I haven't really seen this happening other than people don't know how to use it they actually don't actually configure it this way so let me just give you the lab overview really quick uh, we have this blizz ltd limited company that is kind of acquiring centix ltd which is also a limited company they could be any companies i don't know what they are i just made them up so as you can see on the left side we have our typical end devices and we have a switch and a, and a bliss router and then we have this connection between bliss router and centix router now this connection could be via an isp so you would configure a jerry tunnel uh, it could be an MPLS connection that you have just actually dropped between them. So we're not actually talking about this. So I don't have any internet provider in between them. So I just want you to be clear that it, it's a merger. It could be well be a GRE tunnel or an VTI tunnel. Could be that. Usually that is the case. Uh, so, um, so that is what is happening between these two routers. And then we have Centex LTD, which has a headquarters site, as you can see, which has a switch and a bunch of devices, uh, PCs. And then via MPLS, because Centex was obviously operating before the merger as well. So they had this Centex branch, which had, now this is the tricky part. I mean, not the tricky part, but the main part of this lab is that they had a Centex branch, which was using 10.1.1.0 slash 24 subnet. And Blizz was ironically using the same subnet. So we're in kind of a clash right now. So what do we do? Uh, for the time being, we need to do something. So there are many, I would say, solutions that are for the time being. And this is just one of them. So if you have this kind of a scenario where you have this kind of a setup and you have overlapping addresses, you could leverage the dynamic NAT for the overlapping subnets. Now, I always uh, actually uh, tell you that the lab is available in the material section before I give an overview, but today I gave an overview first, and then I'm going to be saying that, hey, uh, you could check the material section, you can find your lab over there. All right, so let's just dive into the lab now. Now, uh, first of all, everything except the NAT configuration on the Bliss router, which is this router over here, has been configured, and um, I have actually configured the NAT inside and NAT outside. This one being the NAT outside and this one being the NAT inside interface. They have already been configured. So that is not 100% truth. Um, so now we have this trouble that we know uh, that we need to define, which I already did define, that we have overlapping subnets in my environment and in their environment as well. So we could do something like a NAT overload. Or we could do something uh, like a conditional NAT. That is possible, but... Here's the catch of this special dynamic NAT statement is that, first of all, what we, the Blizz, and the Centix are going to decide is an IP subnet pool that uh, I will be using to communicate with them. For example, I would say in this case, I'll just choose this pool, 192.168.99.0.24. Now, this isn't an IP address, it's a pool. Now, here is why I am using the pool. In our dynamic net with overlapping subnet case, what we could do is whenever PC A is trying to communicate with PC B over here, what's going to happen is PC A has an IP address of 10.1.1.10. Whenever it communicates to, uh, say, 192.168.1.30 over here on this side, PC C in this case, its IP address will be translated to 192.168.99.10 the host portion is gonna match 
Similar will be the case with PCB. Whenever it tries to communicate with anyone on this side, on the syntax side, its IP address is going to be translated from 10.1.1.20 to 192.168.99.20. So if its IP address was 30, that would have been the the netted IP of 192.168.99.30. So basically, the host keyword is changing in this NAT scenario, and this is very useful when you have multiple devices residing on the back side over here, and you want the communication back and forth. So that 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 is the case, and I will show you how that works. Uh, so let's just first of all let, let's configure the inside ACL. This is going to be configured on the inside ACL, and this is going to be the NAT pool. So we're going to be configuring a NAT pool, which is private. Normally we do public pools, but this time it's going to be private. So let's go to the Bliss router and configure IP NAT pool, NAT underscore pool, and I'm going to say 192.168.99.1. Uh, to 192.168.99.254 so I'm specifying the range here 255.255.255.255 sorry that's zero now here is a part that will change everything and that is uh, if you do a question mark you have type so the type will be match host so it says that keep host numbers the same after the translation and that is the key part here so that is defining the pool now let's define the access list defining our private ip space that we have over here behind our nat router and that's going to be ip access list extended um i'll just say inside and permit ip 10.1.1.0.0.255 because it's a slash 24 bit something mess i wouldn't go for any here but i still will go for the any here because it, it's just a lab environment um, okay, so so um, now we're gonna bind them in a NAT statement, a dynamic NAT statement. And that'll be IP NAT inside list. If you haven't seen my lecture from the beginner series, it's lecture number seven. I would highly highly recommend you to go check that out. IP NAT inside uh, source list. I'm gonna specify the access list that I just created, named inside. Just going in. So that's half the part. Now it's time to configure the pool. The pool name that we specified over here is not uh, not underscore pool. So there it is. And if we, if I specify the overload keyword, that would actually change its behavior to like dynamic and overload NAT. And this I have explained in that lecture number seven of the previous series. So I would highly, highly recommend you to go and check that out. Uh, there it is okay i just pressed enter and now let's actually check this guy out all right pca is online now as i told you it's 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 actually uh vpc so let me do a ping to pcd that that mystically and magically appears on the on the tab over here. Uh, that that's gonna be the IP address of one nine two one six eight one dot forty. So let's try the one dot forty. It's not gonna work actually. <laughs> I'm telling you that. So so I'm receiving a code of destination host under triple. Now the thing is, obviously I need to de define on this router the the route and on this router because we have introduced this subnet. And saying that we're gonna be uh, sourcing our uh, our PCs with this subnet, so I have to define it over here on this side, right? So let's do that real quick. So I have this syntax router over here and show IP route. If I do that, I can see I only have uh, one route, a static route, and that is the 10.1.1.0 static route, and that is pointing towards this router because it's going towards this IP address. So obviously we cannot configure that here. So we're going to be configuring IP route and saying the new subnet that we introduced uh, between Syntex and me, uh, and between Bliss and me, oh, let's forget the names, 0.255.255.255.0. And uh, what's going to be next hop? Uh, this is going to be the next hop. It's going to be 192.168.55.1. 
So there it is. Now I need to go on Bliss Router. I've scattered them all over the place. Route. IP route, I'm going to say. Uh, I'm going to use you guys for 192.168.1.0.255.255.255.0. And 192.168. Oh, I just forget the IP address. This is the. I am on the Bliss Router right, right now, okay? So I'm doing a start route for uh, this guy. This guy over here. And this is gonna be the next hop, double five dot two, double five dot two. So there it is. I think it's pretty much uh, okay now. Looks pretty fine. I don't know if it works or not. So no, it's not working. Now let's do a troubleshooting together and see what happened. Why isn't it working? So first of all, show IP NAT translation. Let me see if NAT translations are happening uh no <laughs> no they're not happening something has uh, gone wrong i don't know what let me check that out real quick okay first of all i have this uh, access list and a pool pool is okay looks fine to me nothing wrong there show ip access list 10.1.1.10 that uh, looks good too to me. Let's first of all check the 10.1.1. Dot. Hmm, what was my gateway? That was 254. So first of all, let's check that out. That is working. So how about 192.168 to the van side? Let's check the van. 192.168. 55.1. Is that working? How about two? It should work as well, but it's not working. Uh, that is because the NAT statement is not working. If that was working, uh, my this router has a route actually configured on this side. So, so there's some problem on my side, I, I would say, that uh, on the Bliss router, NAT is not happening. Show IP NAT translations. Uh, Oh, sorry, I forgot to specify the inside. Okay, I get it. This is not correct. This is not correct. So you see how it works. I was wondering that this NAT statement is a little short uh, from what it actually should be. IP NAT inside, because I have to specify inside, because I need to change the inside parameters, right? So this was it. That was great. Let's see. Oh, there it is. Beautiful. It's working now uh bliss okay let's check on the bliss what's happening on the nat table show ip nat translations and as you can see five five pings went through and just look at this uh inside the local ip address is 10.1.1.10 and check that out 192.168.99.10 that is the ip address that it has been translated as now check this out PCD is on the other side, right? So can it ping 192.168.99.10? Oh, voila. As you can see, it can also ping him. So that is great, isn't it? So basically what is happening, well, let me just show you again uh, by accessing PCB. Well, uh, I just want to ping uh, that guy over here, 192.168.1.30. 192.168.1.30. I'm gonna pinging that. I sure hope it does work. First of all, not reachable. That doesn't look good. Uh, IP. Uh, first of all, let me check if it's is able to ping. Uh, that is not good. That troubleshooting day here. 10.1.1.254. Ooh, that doesn't look good. That doesn't look good at all. So PCB is not. Uh, 10.1.1.20 IP 10.1.1.20 slash 24 it should be 10.1.1.254 and let's check maybe it didn't have the IP address configured uh, no there's something else happening and hmm now that is odd because this guy is working really fine 
Well, let me check if it can ping 10.1.1.10. Well, sure enough, it can't ping that. But for some reason, it's not pinging that guy. Okay, well, let me just check it out again. Uh, 1.30. 1.30 okay I, I, I was a little suspicious uh, actually what is happening is why I can't ping its default gate uh, it can <laughs> it can it was spanning tree actually I think it was a spanning tree issue because I had a switch in between them so that that is why uh, it took a little bit time to actually come up because I changed the IP address so so uh, that is working if that is working then PCC sitting there can should be able to access 20 right so there it is you as you can see it can access that so if i do a show i translation here you can see all uh, all these 20 subnets coming in let's do a ping from this guy as well uh not this guy mm, pc8 pings um what was it one not 20 was there one not 20 oh god i think there was a 30 and 40 oh yeah okay things are going around and around here uh, this is the last lab actually <clears throat> maybe that's why it doesn't really want to leave me and my passion for it so as you can see the host network is changing is not changing everything else is so in that way pcs d c can communicate with PC A and B respectively without any static NAT statements. But here is the catch. This can only happen when there is a static NAT entry placed in this Bliss router. Now, let me just tell you what I mean by that because I don't want you to uh, perform this and say, hey, this is not working. Let me just clear IP NAT translations here real quick and check this out it's not working anymore it's saying ICMP type 3 destination host unreachable you see that it's not working which, which was working before it was PCA's IP address right so let me just do a ping to anywhere like 40 one ping there and check this out the ping start to work and that is because of this NAT statement the NAT statement is automatically added. This one, see, it's the this this NAT statement, which is being added. You get it. So uh, because of this, NAT translations can happen bidirectional, but the only problem is they can only happen until and unless PCA and B are making any type of connection outside of their NAT router. Now, as you can see, uh, these guys can communicate with 10.1.1. Subnet, whatever that was. Let me just tell you that. I mean, let me just show you that. Uh, they can communicate to 10.1.1.254, which was uh, this IP address over here. They can communicate with them. So everything is um, doable, I would say. The only thing is, solutions are present. Uh, I mean, you can achieve one solution from I think at least two to three things but the problem is that uh, it, it's not that much scalable so eventually you will have to change this IP address that you have on your side or on their side because this can't actually go on for long it's kind of like a virtual link in OSPF uh, if you know about that uh, that is this, that is temporary that's the, just a bad design you have to take care of so this is a bad design actually so you the design should be optimal first of all uh, so whenever you're going for a merger or something like this you need to plan before time this is what happens when you don't have a plan and you haven't worked all the details so I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing